Hi there, it's Manuel of Entagma today with a quick tip. I want to teach you how to use a SDF volume to create outlines around an arbitrary object. Or more precisely speaking, around the intersection between an arbitrary object and a grid. This is a neat little trick, so let's directly dive into Houdini and build this dynamic setup. To start, let's create a geo node and dive inside. Get rid of the file sop. To get started, we could import some geometry, but today I want to use a font sop to model a letter. Press P to bring up the parameters and replace this default text with just an N. Now we have an N in the viewport. It's just an N gone, so one primitive. Let's split this up to avoid shading artifacts later on. So divide the surface using a divide sop. Append a divide sop, make it visible, and it will give you these triangles connecting all the points on the edges. But these triangles are not very beautiful, so tick on, don't generate slivers and avoid small angles. Then the triangles will flow in the other direction, creating a prettier surface. Like so. To give the letter a little depth, let's append poly extrude. Make it visible and just extrude this out a little. Like so. And don't forget to tick output back. Because without output back the object is open and with output back the object will be closed. Append a transform and just rotate the whole thing by 90 degrees to make it lay flat down on the floor, like so. And at the same time let's scale this down by a factor of 0.5. Okay, now we are ready to create the science distance field. Normally I use VDBs when working with volumes because they are just faster in most cases, but today I want to stick to the Houdini volumes, and that is due to the sparse nature of VDB. To save computation time and memory, VDB only stores values around the surface of the object. So in this case it will store values, three voxels by default, around the surface. But we want a sign distance field that fills the entire space because we later on want to calculate the intersection of a grid with this sign distance field. And that is what a Houdini volume will give me. A Houdini volume has values in all the voxels. So that is why I want to build a Houdini volume. I can do this with the ISO offset node. The ISO offset node creates volumes. So just Put this wire here into the first port of the ISO offset, make the ISO offset visible, and set the output type to SDF volume. It immediately creates an SDF, and you can see it here. But of course, the resolution is very coarse, so up the uniform sampling divisions to, say, 200, which is a lot, so it takes some time to calculate. But as soon as it calculates, it will be a very precise representation of the object. But the bounding box here that you see in brown shows you that the volume is just very small around our object. If you want to do stuff like modeling with this, that is perfect because it does not waste voxels. But as I told you, we want to use a grid to calculate the intersection with this field, so we need more space. So tick override bounds and then it will use these values here that are set in min bounds and max bounds. And it will again calculate because the input has changed. And as soon as this is done, you have a sign distance field that is far bigger than before. You can visualize that by using a volume slice. So let's lay down a volume slice. The volume slice will create a grid that is exactly the size of the entire volume. As you can see here, the volume is large. And let's use a different plane, the ZX plane, and you can see this is the volume we just created and the color encodes the values we have here. 
A signed distance field is a function around the surface of an object that encodes the distance of every point to the surface. So if a point is far away, the value is large, and if the point is very close to the surface, the value is very small. And at the surface, so exactly on the surface, the value is usually zero. And inside of the volume, the value is negative. Next, let's create the grid. So lay down a grid, make it visible, and make this smaller, say two by two. And let's give this quite some division, so maybe 200 by 200 for now. And now we want to transfer the values from the volume to this grid, because we want to displace the grid by the values of the signed distance field. There is a note for this called attrib from volume. Attrib from volume. This is a note we are looking for. If we connect the grid and the volume, we can transfer the attribute from the volume to the grid. And the standard is that it is transferring the values from the volume to CD. That's fine for now. Let's stick to it. So you can see here is our N in black. Great. So we can use the color information to distort this plane, but we want to create outlines, many outlines. And what we have here is just a gradient. So we have to remap this. So let's append a VOP, a point VOP, to work with the values. Make it visible and dive inside. I want to work with float values instead of a vector, and color is a vector, so the very first thing is a vector to float. Vector to float, and connect CD to this vector to float, and from now on we want to use the first value from here, so just a red channel. All the channels are the same, so it doesn't matter too much. And I don't want to use the values directly to do the remapping, because they are just linear. They are linearly increasing, because it's a sign distance field. But that is not what I want. I want the gaps between the ripples to be very small here in the direct proximity of the N, and then getting bigger and bigger. So I need some sort of function to remap these values. And a function that comes to my mind is the square root function. I visualized this for you on Wolfram Alpha. And as you can see, the square root function is starting quickly and then decreasing. So it's sort of a rotated parabola. And that is probably quite nice. So let's use this. Lay down a square root a square root and just pass the value through this square root thing. The next thing is that we want a fit. So append a fit range, because these values are not between 0 and 1, of course. So let's put all of this here into the fit. And let's say we want to start not directly at 0, so not directly with the first ripple at the edge of the surface, but a little off, so 0 0.08 maybe. And then we want to remap the values to a broader range. Because I'm planning to use a sine function on this, and the sine function is oscillating between 0 and 2 pi. So I want values that go far beyond 2 pi. So let's say 90. So the values are now really in a much broader range. So time to lay down a sine function. And append the sine function here. And now we can use this to displace the surface. Displacing always means adding a vector to the current position. So lay down an add node, and we want to add to the current position, and we want to add a vector. So let's just create a float to vector, like so. And the value we calculated should be the y component of this vector. So let's add it and use this as a new position. And boom, there are your ripples. It's just that these ripples are really very, very large, of course, because the sign is going between one and minus one, and our model is not that large. So as a next step, we want to remap this height. We can do this by just appending a multiply 
here directly after the sign. So let's go through this multiply node before we create the vector, like so. No, like, get rid of this connection here, like so. And now we need a value to multiply this with. I can use a constant just to show the effect, like so. And you can see now I can set the height of this displacement. And because of the square root, you see that we have a lot of ripples here near the object, and then the gaps start to get bigger and bigger. Beautiful. And now it would be nice if the displacement would be large here in the proximity of the object and get less and less with distance. So why not using a dynamic value instead of this constant? So get rid of this constant, instead put down a fit range, and let's fit this initial distance value differently than before. So let's say over the distance of one unit, so zero to one, it should decrease from a very small value, something like to zero. And let's use this as a multiplier. And now you can see that the displacement is getting less and less and less. So it's decreasing with distance. Maybe it's still a little strong here. So let's go down on this, like so. Cool. That's already our outline effect. Maybe the grid has not enough resolution, so let's give it some more resolution, like so. And now you can see we have beautiful outlines around our N. To make use of the procedural nature of Houdini, it would be great if I could transform the N now to create different effects or, or to create an animation. So I could, of course, go in here and just start transforming my original N, but that would mean that the ISO offset had to build the sign distance field in every frame, and that is very slow. So it's much easier and better to just transform the volume. So append a transform after the ISO offset. And now I can go in here and move the volume and it will update in real time because it's transforming the volume. But we don't see our original N and it would be great if we would see our original N. So lay down a merge and just merge the output of the grid with the original N. But now we have the problem that our original N is not transformed like the sign distance field. So let's write an expression to transform the N in the same way as the sign distance field. So another transform node is needed on this stream here. And let's write a little expression to link this transform to, to the transform three. So that can be done with a general expression. And the easiest way is to go here and then click here to copy the parameter, go to this transform and then paste relative references. And we have to do this unfortunately for every parameter. So copy parameter and paste relative references. Same for the third parameter, copy, and paste, relative references. And let's do the same thing for the rotation, copy parameter, paste relative references, copy and paste. And for the Z component of the rotation, copy parameter and paste relative references. And now I can go in here and if I now transform my side distance field, the polygonal N will transform along. Now maybe append a color to this side to make the N visible just by coloring it white. And you can see now we have a setup where we can rotate the thing and the N will beautifully rotate with the sign distance field. So both rotate together. And if you rotate this, you get fitting ripples.
The ripples are a little coarse, so maybe append a smooth. And let's up the strength to say 100, like so. And now we have smooth ripples around our letter. And you can use this gradient for shading. And in my example, I not only used the gradient, but I used the sign too. Go inside the point VOP and create a bind export for the sign value. If I quickly use the sign value here as CD, you can see this sign value is giving me these ripples. So instead of using it for CD, I just bind it to this parameter and call it mask. Then you can use this mask value in shading. And that is what I did. I used the gradient and the mask, both combined to create the shading. And that concludes this quick tip of creating outlines or ripples around an object. I hope you learned something and see you next time. Please let me thank all of our patrons, especially Mohamed Alabri, Mikhail Ivanov, Rob Bryant Jr., Refik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Nick Nick, John Kunz and Joseph Howerton. Thanks so much for making all of this possible.